show where we talk about fishing things called. What? Hey folks, welcome to another episode of What? Hey, today we're talking about something that we all like doing. It's pitching a Texas rig or some kind of bait like a critter. So, I'm going to show you some baits that I like to pitch and then uh, and with colors and styles of bait. And first though, I'm going to show you what I put them on before we get started into that. Usually, I use a wide gap hook, EWG like that, or I use a straight hook, this one has a keeper on it, and you snail tie a snail knot. They work fine. Okay, I'll show you a big hook. That's, that's so you, you can see it. That's a uh, and match your hook size to your bait. That big hook would be good for a great big old bait. Uh, usually three odd to five odds what you want. This is probably a, a four. And I'm going to show you how to rig it. To start it in the bait. Okay, bring it down like that. Turn it around. Now, on your line, you're going to have some kind of weight, right? I'm, I'm going to cover that with you. Alright, I like to bring it through. Then I like to pull it. Get it up there. Make sure it's straight here, guys. Then I like to pull it back. I call that text pone, I think what most people do. And I put it in there a little bit. Look here. No hook. When the fish bites down on it, BAM! There's the hook, okay? Just pull it back, put it back in the body like that. Alright? Make sure it's straight as possible. It cuts down on line twist, it looks more natural in the water. Now, I'm going to share something else with you. These are Charlie Briar. Slider hooks. Now I know we use a little eighth ounce and one sixteenth ounce ones, and we put the little slider worm on them. We've all done that on power worm. You'll see me do it in some of my videos. I use them a lot. I order these from from Charlie direct from his his uh, web page because I can't find them anywhere else. This one's got a wide gap hook on it. See there? It's got a wide gap hook. This one done. This one's okay for small worms, maybe six inch worms, and some of the smaller baits. If you was using something like this Baby Destroyer, it would be fine, okay? I've caught it, I've used it on the Baby Destroyer, but if you're throwing something bigger, you'd want this hook. And see, I could take this hook, let me grab, let me just grab this up. Let's grab this pit boss right here. I can take this hook. Same thing, so good. turn him around, come back, figure out who I want him, come through. Same thing, I come up on top, stick him back in. Now, what's the advantage of this? This is my weight's part of my hook. So when I'm pitching, or if I want to skip under a dock, it skips. When you got a Texas rig, and usually a Texas rig, some people peg it, some people don't. Uh, if you peg it, it's harder to skip. This skips pretty easy. So try it sometimes. You put this on a spinner rod, or if you're good at skipping with a bait caster, you can skip this up under a dock. Works fine. Or back through the tree feather. I use these a lot, and you'll, i got a video where I'm fishing up on Kerr Lake. And again, if you check it out, you'll see where I'm using those guys. So let's talk about the baits. I'm going to stop and show you some of the baits that I use for pitching and skipping under docks. Okay, folks, we're going to talk about the different pitching baits. And there's a lot of different baits you can pitch. I, I know there's going to be some baits here that uh, you probably haven't seen. And there's some of you that fish a lot of them will be like, how about this? How about that? I'm not trying to cover everything. I'm just trying to cover some different style baits and some baits that work, that, that catch fish on, okay? That's what I'm trying to do. And you're going to see that most of mine are close to the same color. I don't get too wild in colors. Uh, well, to, sometimes I do get a little wild, I reckon, but not too wild. When I, I say that, I'm going to stop right now. And I'm going to pull one more out. There's Sometimes after the spawn here on Lake Gaston, uh, wild colors seem to work sometimes. I'm going to lay that down there then. You can see now this bait is kind of a red and black on that part, but look at his belly. <laughs> yeah, he's orange and some yellow. Okay. Sometimes that's uh, a hot bait, especially early spring. We've got some more color to the water. I've got one on my pitching rod right now, that color. I've been pitching it. Uh, when the water's got some stain to it, and right after the spawn, that's, they seem to like that that uh, little bit of red in it and yellow in it, okay? 
So yeah, I do get off the norm a little bit. This one's Bruiser. These are these are D bombs. A D bomb is excellent if you ever used them or not. It might be something you want to give a try to. Missile baits. If you've ever, never used missile bait products, they make a great product. It has a good scent to the bait. All right. Everybody's used these guys, right? A pit boss. Now that's a four inch one and a three inch one. I laid the three inch one down so you can see the difference in the size. It will be able to help you. If you're fishing around an area that's got bass are having a hard time picking you up, they're finicky, uh, they're hard to catch, you might want to go with three inch. Uh, four inch, we got a lot of big bass. Uh, if you're Carolina rigging it, now some of you ever thought about that. Now I'm talking about pitching baits today, baits that we pitch with. But you can Carolina rig these baits too, guys. That flat body makes it pitch easy, makes it skip easy too, okay? The shape of the body like that makes a big difference if you're trying to skip it under a dock. A Texas rig is hard to skip anyway, but if you take and put that on a shaky head, uh, if you put it on a pro slider head, watch my video on the pro slider head, you can skip that bait. Okay, missile, okay, this is called a baby destroyer. I love the baby size, I do have some big ones too, I didn't lay it out there, uh, I don't have them laying here guys, beside of me I'd pull one out. I have to, to make these videos guys, I said this in the other videos, this is a lot of work. I gotta dig all this stuff off my boat. Uh, dig it out, put it back after I get done, then, plus the editing time and stuff. But I'm doing it trying to help folks become a better fisherman. And there's folks out there that are just getting started to help those. And if you're old as I am, been fishing 40 years, you might have never tried a, a D-bomb or, or, or a destroyer. And you're going to like, well, Dennis said it was a good bait, I'm going to try. That's what I'm... That's what we're doing, guys, helping each other become better fishermen. This has become one of my favorites, guys. I got a video on fishing Kerr Lake. Again, if you go to my symbol, my little fish symbol, and click on it there, it'll take you to my home page. On that home page, on the top, it has a, like four words across it. One of them is videos. You click on that, all my videos I've ever made will be lined up underneath of there. You can watch some of them. Uh, I'm fishing Kerr Lake. The lake's flooded. It was last spring, about mm, April. They ate that D-bomb up. Yeah, I tried some other stuff, but they wanted that D-bomb. It's got these little legs on it, as you can see, that makes it, you know, and it's got this swimming tail. It's a good bait. If you've never tried it, guys, give it a whirl. I love it. It's becoming one of my favorites. Now, this is something you've probably never seen or many of, okay? This is by Grandy Bass. It's got the flopping crawls. Plus, it's got little legs, antennas here in the middle that swim. If this is kind of a watermelon candy. If you can see, it's got a lot of little red and blue flake in it. Uh, right after the spawn, it's when I pitch a lot. Uh, and I, I, of course, if a, if a jig bites not on, I'm pitching. I've got a pitching rod in front of my boat all the time. My favorite thing to do is pitch a bait, either either power worm uh, or pitch a bait like this, or um, I'll get into it in some other video uh, of pitching uh, worms. Um, just my favorite thing to do. I like to feel that thump when they when they hit that jig or hit that uh, bait and you pitch it into cover. That's what makes bass fishing fun. This works really well. I usually Texas rig it. I do again. I do put baits on stuff like the power uh, pro power heads. They're just a slider head. It's a bigger hook. Everybody's used to Charlie, Charlie Brewer slider heads. Well, if you look, they make one with a. They make them up to like. A, Three eighths of an ounce with like a four odd hook in them. And it's a deep hook, you know. So it's a good hook. It's, I have a video on using them. Now, guys, this is a Zoom brush hog. We all know what that is, don't we? That is my favorite color of my throat. It's called Blue Fleck. It's just a purple, a deep purple with blue flake. I hope, that, I hope the colors are coming out here in this video. That is a good one. Uh, I guarantee you, almost everybody watching this has some brush hogs. And they, they work. Green pumpkin, watermelon red, <laughs> black blue, right? They work. Now, this is a speed crawl. And everybody probably has that too by Zoom, right? That's that new color, what's it called? Uh, do I have the bag? Did I carry the bag off too far? I don't remember the color of it now. Somebody's probably standing there watching it. Now, the bag says it's green pumpkin, blue flash. All right, and it is. It's got some blue in it. I thought it was that new color, that uh, moon salt or something like that, but it's not. I got those two somewhere. So I don't. Sometimes I'm not paying close enough attention when I'm pulling out of the tackle box. But you can see it's got a little blue shimmer to it. 
and it's green punky on this side. That's a good color. For, and that, that these are good jig trailers too, guys. If you're talking about jig, you could use any of these for a jig trail. All right. Now, a big brother of that brush hog I showed you, hog. This is young. This is a Christie critter. This is a full size Christie critter. And now, I mean, let me move that one. I'll put it right here. Okay. As he could go into the screen, he's so big. Big old tails. Now I'm gonna lay the. This is a baby brush hog beside of it. You see the difference. He's a lot fatter. Okay, he's just a little longer, but he's a lot fatter. Uh, if you got some big bass and the water's got a little stain to it, go a little bigger. All right, all right. Yokomoto, Gary Yokomoto, cowboy, right on cowboy. He's got gray, big old flap. If the water's got some stain to it, or you want to make some commotion in the water, those legs right there make commotion. And you can see how wide it is. It's going to make some commotion. Um, it makes a good jig trailer too. You can jig trail, you can Texas rig it. I like to put it on a jig head. So the Texas rig, and again, I stick that on a jig head and pitch it. Alright? Now, the last one, big bite baits. The guys, I use a lot of their stuff too. I like their flukes, I like their worms, I like their curtail worm. This is the fighting frog. It's got a slot in it. If there's anything I don't like about it, some of these companies make these hook slots. As you can see, this one has a big one. And that's nice. But, after you catch a fish or two, they tend to tear in half some of these baits, don't they? But that's a good one. It's called a fighting frog. Uh, it looks like you think these little legs swim. You would think by looking at these little legs, you're going to like, well, they don't do a whole lot. They got a little rib on them, kind of like the Strike King Rage Crawls do. And they don't flop quite as much as they do, but uh, in colder water, and when, when the bass are up in cover, they work just fine. I think it's the shape of them that works, because they have that crawfish shape, don't they? If you kind of look at that thing, doesn't it have a crawfish shape to it? I think that's really what helps it a lot. But they, uh, that's a good, good, good bait right there. Okay, guys, I hope that helps you. Don't get hung up on colors. Green pumpkins, green pumpkin greens, green pumpkin blues, uh, black blues. You're not going to go wrong, watermelon colors, you know, like I said, if you want to add a little color sometime, try something like the, this blue fleck, the blue fleck's been good for me, if the water is crystal clear, no, but if the water has any color at all to it, that blue fleck one's a good one, and uh, if I'm not throwing blue fleck in the brush hog, I'm throwing watermelon red or green pumpkin, but the only three colors I buy in them, hope that helps you guys, alright guys, we're going to tie this one up, I'm going to show you some things that I pitch with, Oops! If I'm pitching something small, like a uh, smaller slider head, or maybe one of these small baits around some docks or something, I'm going to use a 7 foot medium Dobbins rod and a, a small stereo reel with 8 or 10 pound test on it. Alright? And that's for clear water and up shallow. Now, excuse me, Mr. Bass. If I'm pitching something in between, let's say a quarter ounce in that area, and like, guys, look at, wow, bam, look right there. Didn't you know I had that? I want to pay attention. There's your slider head, and I talked about it earlier, and I got a D bomb on it, with some, some color on it. Okay? Except our water right now is a little stained. I've been using that. Red's good in the spring, guys. You all know that. Now, uh, that's what I pitch that with. What do you use? Again, this is a Dobbin Sarah Rod. This is a, just a loose BB1. This is a 7 foot medium, 12 pound line. This is 12 pound uh, P line floor clear. Okay? That's a good light bait rod. I use that up to like 3 eighths of an ounce. Jigs, pit, Texas rigs, whatever. This is my jig, heavier jig rod. It's got a 15 pound uh, red label on it. Now, uh, right now, I've got just a Senko on it, but that's what I was using last on it. But I pitch jigs on that, and then if I want to pitch these heavier baits, then I'd use that, okay? And I'd use uh, a Texas rig on it, or a heavy, heavy bait. I wanted to show you one more thing before I close out with you guys. Like Again, I, said that, I think I said it, it has a 15-pound line on it, and that's a medium-heavy Jason Christie rod by Falcon. It's very... It's very heavy for a medium heavy. The Dobbins is a medium heavy too, but it's it don't fish like a medium heavy. Some rods are like it, guys. I wanted to show you something. Tungsten.
lead. You know, every every uh, video I try to give you a major tip. If you never use tungsten, yes, it's six dollars for three of them in a quarter ounce. I, I usually use quarter uh, ounce most of the time, and sometimes I buy three eighths. That's about heavy as I go. I know I watch I watch YouTube too, guys, and a lot of guys I hear them talking about throwing half ounce. You hear me say it in jigs and other things I've talked about. I don't use half ounce very often. If I'm throwing a half ounce, I'm throwing it deep. If I'm pitching, of course, the lake we live in gets fished a lot. Uh, you've got to do things different, and you got to you got to fish quietly. I'm not fishing a lake in uh, an area that there's a lot of fish and less fishermen. You've got to do things here a little different, and that's the thing I do. But let me tell you, this is a quarter. That's why I usually throw. So usually I pitch with. I pitch with a quarter, like I said, or three eighths. This is a quarter. Now, if you've never used tungsten. As I was going to say, it's $6 for three of them. Lead is a couple of dollars for a bunch. If you never used a tungsten, uh, dig in the couch, find some change. <laughs> Being funny, guys. Buy you a pack of tungsten weight. Walmart, some Walmarts carry them. Ours used to, they don't anymore. Um, but you can buy them in any, any bait shop. Once you use a tungsten weight, if you're using fluorocarbon line, you're going to feel that weight. Every time that thing ticks a rock. So if you've never been there, you've never used tungsten, I'm telling you. I've done it for years. I kept saying, I ain't paying that. I ain't paying that. Once I bought some, that's all I use now. I don't use nothing but tungsten. That's it. Because you can feel, you feel more. The tungsten sends more signals back to you as you're going across cover. You're going like, oh, I'm in the rocks now. It's a mud bottom. It's a mud bottom. When you hit the rocks, you'll know it, okay? So that's a good tip for you. If you never use tungsten, Give it a try. Hey, my name is Dennis. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button, guys. I'm trying to get this channel going. I need to get on up there to about 15,000. I've got a long ways to go. Help me out. I'm trying to help you. Trying to give you some ideas. Hopefully, I showed you a bait you've never seen before, never thought about. And you can try something new. Don't be afraid to try new things. If you're fishing the same water all the time, and you're using the same thing, you're, you're leaving fish there when you come home. You try something different, something they haven't seen, you're going to catch more fish. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time right here on Fishing Lake Country.